Hello and welcome to Run Testers. My name's Nick. And I'm Tom. And in this video, we're going to be comparing the Endorphin Speed 3 and the New Balance Super Comp Trainer. So looking at the key stats of the shoes first, the Supercomp Trainer is incredibly expensive. It's £210 in the UK or $180 in the US. Uh, the Speed 3 is also expensive. It's £165 or $170. Obviously the stack height is the big feature on the Supercomp Trainer. It goes all the way up to 47 millimeters at the heel and it's 39 at the forefoot for an eight millimeter drop. The Speed also has an eight millimeter drop, but it's uh, 36 millimeters at the heel and then 28 at the forefoot. The Speed's a lot lighter, partly because it's got a much smaller stack height. It weighs 240 grams or 8.5 ounces in my UK size nine, whereas the Supercomp is 307 grams or 10.8 ounces. Uh, so Speed has a pretty normal mesh upper. Uh, it's kind of got a wider fit than past versions and a wider base in general. You're getting a little bit of cushioning around the collar and tongue there. And then a full Power Run PB midsole. This is Sokini's Piba base foam the best foam in its range and the midsole is shaped with that kind of speed roll geometry to give a nice smooth rocker effect on the run and you've got a full length nylon plate in the speed as opposed to the carbon plate on the pro 3. the other difference to the plates in the endorphin range is that the speed 3's plates have little winglets on the side to try and again create a bit more stability and position your foot in the center of the plate you've got a fairly minimal outsole a fair bit of exposed foam there but you are getting rubber in all the key impact areas around the forefoot and the heel there so the Supercomp Trainer has a huge stack of New Balance's soft and springy fuel cell foam. You've got a carbon plate running through it, uh, which kind of sits very close to the top of the foam at the heel to try and create a bit more stability, a firmer feel there, because it is such a high stack of foam, and then kind of dies through the shoe and scoops up at the front. It's New Balance's Energy Arc setup, which again has a bit of a kind of rocker feel to it, much like the Saucony range, but with a much higher stack overall. There's a huge midsole cutout on the shoe, which is designed to kind of force your foot into the middle of the uh, of the foam as you're kind of running again to increase stability and also the sidewalls to the foam here. So your foot almost sits within the foam to create a bit more of a bucket seat. Again, more stability. They're very worried about stability because it is such a high stack shoe. The upper is very minimal and pretty lightweight. There's not much cushioning at all. The heel is you know, reinforced at the back there to try and create a nice secure fit and a bit more stability around the back there. And then on the outsole, you've got rubber sections at the front and then the back of the outsole and then little bit on the on the plate such as the depth and the size of the cutout they need to put a bit of rubber on the plate to protect it which I've not seen before I don't think in a shoe alrighty I've got Tom back with me now and we're gonna talk a bit about fit to, oh, I have thoughts on fit on these but um, maybe you can go first what do you think about the fit of these shoes I have thoughts on fits fit for the uh, speed 3 so we talked about this quite a bit in the past speed 3 has been updated and it's a bit wider um, there's some elements added for stability but from a fit perspective it, there's a wider midsection of the shoe uh, which is probably not great for some people It's it's been fantastic for me because the speed 2 was a little bit too narrow for me and it took me 2 or 3 runs to find it to make it comfortable I actually had a couple of uncomfortable runs the first time a couple of times I ran in the speed 2 speed 3 has actually been better for me because it is, does have that more relaxed uh, midsection so it's a, it's a bit wider uh, so I do actually find the fits better in the speed 3 but I don't go through size in the speed 3 uh, the super comp trainer I've had no issues with it at all. I think it's true to size and I find it very comfortable. Fair enough. So I, I'm opposite to Tom. I have a narrow foot and the Speed 3 is a little bit wide for me. You see how tight I pulled those laces there and I've had a bit of rubbing. I found it a bit roomy in general, but I couldn't go half size down because the toe box fit is perfect. So I am still true to size, but if you do have a narrow foot, uh, be aware that you might have to do a bit of heel locking and be a bit concerned about some of the rubbing at the back and the Speed 2 did have a slightly better fit for me. Um, the New Balance, so New Balance are a bit of a random brand for me. I often find that sometimes they get really short at the front on some shoes, like the original Rebel um, or the RC Elite one, uh, like to the point where I should have sized up. Pacer, I also found very, um, very tight. But the Trainer, I think, is a pretty good fit in my normal size. So I have two feet, my, my feet are slightly different sizes. One fits a little bit tight. So maybe I could have gone half a size up, but um, I think, yeah, it's okay, true to size. It's, it's In the New Balance range, it's probably more towards things like the TC rather than the really aggressive racing shoes, which can be a bit tight. Okay, we have got two plated training partner shoes here, Tom, but uh, they ride in different ways. Um, How has your run test been in these two shoes? Very interesting. <laughs> it's, it's an interesting versus. Um, I'll start with the Speed 3. It's a shoe that we've talked about quite a lot, and there are minimal changes to the feel of the run in comparison to the previous two versions in this shoe. Um, it's just a fantastic do-it-all trainer. You know, you can do your easy runs in this. I wouldn't say... 
you're it, it's it compares with easy run shoes but you can still do them in this if i'm going for an easy run i'm probably not going to go for the speed three if i've got other shoes that are better at it um but i would say that the speed three is still fantastic at you know you can go faster in it you can um do your daily miles in it you can do interval sessions in it you can do races in it i think it just does it all and as a training partner to the something like the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3, I think it's fantastic. I think it, it, it the speed range has been waiting for the Pro 3 to come along so that it can be a good training partner for a, for a shoe. There, there hasn't been a, a Saucony shoe from the previous Pros. They, they just It was better than the, the previous Pros at, sp- at speed and at comfort and at, you know do, doing races. So... The Pro 3 is superior as a ratio, I, I think, and this works really well with it. Um, so I just think it's fantastic all around shoe. You can do loads of stuff in. The Supercomp Trainer is a really interesting shoe. And when I started wearing it, I wasn't quite sure if I really liked it, uh, what it was really for. Um, I, it's quite difficult to compare it to the Speed 3 because I don't think it is that, it's not really that versatile. Um, I started using it um, to do long runs in marathon long runs at a slow pace, easy, easy pace. Um, and what I find find of it is that when you start running in it, it does feel like that you can feel that plate. There's a lot of foam in this shoe, an enormous amount. And it's almost like we, we talked about this before where you've also got to look at the road in front of you because if you step some, on something wrong, you're going to go over because it's, it's like running on stilts. Um, but over those runs, I found that um, it's not, it's not very good for long runs, I found. Um, it, I'll get to like 12K and I'm enjoying it. And then it's suddenly, it's it's quite a heavy shoe. I'd start to lose the benefits from that plate and I start to slow down with it. I'm not enjoying it as much. Um, but that was the first few runs. I've actually really started to get into this shoe now because I, I, I it, it sort of sits in this weird realm and marathon training has been fantastic for it because um, when I'm running not at tempo level, maybe a bit lower where I'm sort of maintaining a pace, I'm not going to do an easy run, but I'm just sort of trying to sit in the sit in the middle of a, a tempo run and a, an easy run. That's where it seems to work really well. It can go a bit faster, but not as fast as something like the Speed 3. And it's still very comfortable over those runs. As long as you watch where you're going and you don't fall over into the road. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Uh, I, I probably actually... I. I don't know. I'm struggling a bit with the trainer. I have to say because it is a big. I first run in it, I thought I was going to absolutely love it. Like I, you know, it was tired legs. Went out and did like an easy hour, and it was great. And I had a 22 miler at the weekend at a pretty relaxed pace, and I thought, perfect. I can't think of a better shoe to do this 22 miler in than this because it'll protect the legs so well. The bouncy feeling from this foam is incredible, and it just never goes away. So like the end of a run, it still feels just as almost ludicrously bouncy. It doesn't bottom out at all. But yeah, like you, I got, I got about, you know, probably 10, 12 miles in and I started to go, this is this shoe is wearing on me a bit. It's just mentally a bit tiring to run in this shoe because I am worried about where I'm putting my foot. Um, it's just, just a bit, I'm just too aware of the shoe. Like when I, that kind of long run like that, where I'm not going all out, I don't really want to think about my shoe. If anything, I want to just relax and enjoy, let the miles tick off. And it was okay, but it was a bit weighty and a bit kind of intrusive and... Yeah, I don't know if it's that. It's got a different kind of versatility to the speed. So I think both of them are versatile shoes. You can pretty much do all of your daily training in these shoes. The speed leans much more towards the fast stuff, and but the and the super comp leads towards the slow stuff. So I took it down the track and did kind of workout running. Uh, I think it was twenty times, sixty seconds on, sixty seconds off, and I did ten reps in a different shoe and swapped to this. Um, uh, it was all right. It feels crazy trying to run on a track fast in the shoe because you know you've got quite a bouncy track and then you've got this bouncy shoe and it's just you know absurd the amount of spring in it. But it doesn't feel very quick. You do run quite quick in it, but it doesn't feel quick. The speed feels quick. You get that roll, that fluid kind of speed roll tech, a bit of punch from your toe off. You feel the plate. The foam is much firmer and you know feels like it's pushing you forward and it feels like a more aggressive shoe even though it is relaxed enough to then do easy runs in as well and it's so much lighter and more enjoyable i find for speed work or tempo stuff than the super comp for sure pure easy runs like base runs so not long ones things like an hour there here and there you know in the week that's where i think this shoe does work well uh, i think it's great to pull on then you really won't feel any effects on your legs basically in terms of tiring them out the next day which is good it's just a good way to go and get your legs moving get your cardiovascular system fired up and be protected whereas the speed is fine for those base runs, I find, but it does, you know, it is much more of a shoe that I really love for when you are progressing the pace or doing a tempo run or doing a session. And yeah, you can go all the way to racing in this shoe, which I just wouldn't in this, not least because it's illegally high for road races. But um, so yeah, they're coming at kind of part training partner shoes from different angles. The speed obviously very leave very obviously leaves a place in a rotation for a easy day shoe. I think the endorphin shift is the one obviously socking market with it, but you can use it for everything and then you know use the pro for races. Whereas I guess the trainer almost fits the bill of doing all of your training but to me 
I would want a faster shoe alongside it in a rotation because I don't find it comfortable to do fast shoe runs in it. And actually, I don't love it for long runs. So I think it's kind of ended up falling, you know, not not into a perfect hole for me, apart from just being a pretty solid day-to-day -day shoe for your kind of medium distance base runs. That would probably be where it sits best for me. Yeah, interesting. You talk about it being when you're going on your long runs that it's almost quite, it makes it harder. And I think it, that that plate and that bounce and everything, it's almost, it's like you've got to manage it while you're running. Uh, and and it, it's helping you run efficiently and maybe a little bit faster on a consistent pace. But also I find that, 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 um, that soft foam, bouncy foam, and the calm plate it almost ties you out a bit. It's like you don't. I don't want that halfway through a long run. I want just something that's just keeping my feet comfortable, and I don't want you know something moving my feet along. Um, so yeah, I do. I actually really do like it because I found that sweet spot for it. But um, yeah, I think uh, that we'll talk about the price in in the verdict. But yeah, I, I do think it's a good shoe. I just think it's a very niche shoe and. It's not going to deliver what a lot of people want um, if if they're looking for a you know what it's, it's kind of designed for, uh, which is a, that's a training partner to um, that can do everything. Which because I don't think it can. Yeah, I, I, the other thing with that is I do so much if I can of my base training and long runs in particular on at least a canal towpath or go into my local forest and tracks and. I did the 22 mile long run on that in the shoe and that's one of the reasons I had to think about it so much. I think because it was a perfectly flat, like dusty surface, but. Even there, it's a little bit less comfortable than some most shoes. You know, it's, if you if all your runs are on the road and you really want the maximum protection from the pavement and even hard trails is you don't even go on those, then yeah, it may be more suitable. But I found like if yeah, if you're taking it on any kind of and even around here the pavements, you know, just trees growing through them oh, and yeah, stuff. You yeah, know, it's yeah. cambers. It's, you know, it's not always ideal. I was doing laps and laps <laughs> in a park the other day, and there was a, a hole, a tiny little hole which I couldn't even spot when I was running. And it went in, and I, I oh, you know, you get that feeding where you, you I, yeah. it just starts to roll, and you think, oh god, here we go, here we go. Uh, well, I've managed to pull it back, but since then, I've just been—it's like a trail run. I'm just staring at the ground the whole time, just just trying not to fall over, uh, which is not something you want when you're doing long no. runs because you you could lose uh, focus exactly. quite easily. All right, on to the vote then. I think these are two quite interesting shoes. Um, Tom, where would you? Where would you kind of position them and which one would you pick of them? Easy, easy go for me. Um, I mean, I do really like the Fuel, fuel Style Supercon Trainer. I, I, I've I, found it where it works and I'm enjoying the runs that I'm doing in the, like those base runs, like the short distance marathon training runs. I actually quite like it. It feels good. feels enjoyable. Um, and it just makes the run go a little bit more smoothly, I think, for those short runs. But that's it. I'm not really using this for any other run. Um, and for the price... This is £200 in the UK. That's so expensive for a shoe that is quite niche um, and I'm not sure about. I mean, <laughs> you get into the realms of, you know, complex ratios uh, with that sort of price. The Speed 3 is still a fairly expensive shoe. It's about I think, 165 now, isn't it? Um, and it just does a lot more. There's it, The bang for your book on the Speed 3 is fantastic and you, it can just do everything. It's just a fantastic shoe to have in your collection. If you are if you only buy one shoe and you're you know planning to race or you do different types of runs, Speed 3, no brainer. But also if you've got a rotation, Speed 3 just fits so neatly into the middle of that rotation that again, it's just a no brainer. The only other probable, probable shoe that I might get is the Hocker Mac 5 for, for that in a rotation. But um, yeah, I think Speed 3, if you're spending £165, that's probably one of the best £165 you can spend in running. Whereas if you went out and bought the £200 Super Comp Trainer, that's probably one of the worst £200 you can spend <laughs> in running. Um, yeah. So it's a, it's a pretty easy easy win for me. But I'm not saying I don't like the, the, the trainer. Yeah. I just think, you know, it's just a very difficult shoe to, to, to buy. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, the speed is probably going to deliver on what you expect from it. Like, it's more or less the perfect plated partner shoe that actually can do pretty much everything. Um, and it's maybe not the most, you know, all out comfortable for easy runs, but that's where you would fill out a rotation with something else. Whereas I think you probably won't get what you maybe hope for with the New Balance Super Comp Train, that's how I put it. Like, it is comfortable and it is great for knocking out kind of easy runs, but go too long in it I think it becomes a bit heavy and a bit you know tiring to use and I don't think it's very versatile in the same way the speed is in terms of speed work so you end up with a shoe that you could I think you could very easily replace in a rotation with just a, a normal cushioned option like for goody you know a nice easy run shoe I'm going to say the same thing I say all the time fl flying a flag for uh, Philstar TC um, it is that shoe was far superior 
as a training partner for uh, Carbon Plate Shoe. It was just, just it just did everything you wanted it to. And I, st- I can't for the life of me work out why that shoe hasn't been u- upgraded. Um, because it, like you can still buy it now, and you can buy it significantly cheaper than the the trainer. Uh, I've seen it under a hundred pounds in some places. If you if you really want a shoe that does what the trainer is meant to do, get the get the TC because I still love that shoe. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, I'd agree. Like, I don't love it as much as Tom because I mean no one does, but it's a, it's a very good shoe. Um, and it uh, yeah, it certainly is more versatile and more. You can use that for more stuff more comfortably. I didn't have to think about or worry about the stack in that shoe as much um, as I have on this shoe, even using it on like canals and forest roads. So. All right, that's it, guys. That's our comparison of the Endorphin Speed 3 and the Fuel Cell Supercomp Trainer. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Go watch all the other videos. We've got loads coming out at the moment. Go listen to the new podcast when that's up. Um, and yeah, well, well, bye from me. And from me.